Hi, I'm David Bolton of Go Parallel, and today I'm going to talk about timing some C++ code to see how fast it runs. C++ is considered the best programming language for writing fast code. Operating systems, word processors, compilers, even Java virtual machines are all written in C++. Much as C++ compiles to one or two machine code instructions, I'm thinking of array accesses, comparisons, arithmetic, so that's not what I really want to look at. It's the higher level aspects of C++, for example strings and collections that really interest me. It's also worthwhile comparing how fast typical computing operations take, say on a desktop computer. Latency used to mean the length of time waiting for a sector on a disk cylinder to come under the read-write head. With the disk rotating at 7200 RPM, that means a sector passes under the head 120 times every second. Nowadays though, latency is taken as how long, say, to read data from memory. The GIST at, and I'll put the address up, uh, and that's on the screen there, shows the times for common operations. A, a CPU can execute a lot of C++ compile code in between some of these reads and writes. My computer runs at 3.5 GHz. That means each clock cycle happens 3.5 million times a second. Some machine code instructions might take 20 clock cycles to run, but trying to work out how long a piece of code takes to run on one CPU is a hard problem. It takes time to fetch data from the processor caches or even main memory. It has to fill the instruction cache. If there's a branch and it's not been predicted, then it has to reload the cache. And there's all sorts of tricks going on, so trying to figure it out is actually quite hard. If a process takes 50 nanoseconds, then in theory it could be run 20 million times in just one second. It's almost impossible to think how fast that is. So for accurate timing, you have to repeat, repeat a piece of code a few thousand or even a million times and time it and work out the average. I've used C++11 because it has a chrono library and I'm using the Intel C++16 compiler to time code. The chrono library lets you uh, do accurate timing. Um, here's a full program. It's running on Windows 10 and at the moment the computer has 9% RAM in use so it shouldn't be slowed up by swapping memory to and from disk which can happen when you have a lot of processes open in memory and the background tasks are so light that it's actually using, it says it's using 0%. So let's see how long it takes to add up the numbers, to sum up the numbers 0 to 1000. I've used two loops. You can see here's the outer loop. That's the number of times we're going to repeat it and that's set to a thousand and inside here I'm summing up the, into the variable b uh, the numbers from 0 to 1999 and then putting that in c and at the end of the program after it's done this operate, set of operations a thousand times it, tell, it works out how long it took and divides it by the number of loops which is a thousand. It then uses the chrono duration and you can specify nano or micro or milli here and then outputs the uh, time. In, in, in this case I'm using nano so it's nanoseconds. So let's run this and see how long it takes. <laughs> As you can see there, it was pretty quick, and that's the total there, and it took 412 nanoseconds on average to do that sum up. Just a quick point about the program. I compiled it in release mode, and it's on in 64-bit, and I'm at, I actually output the value there, and there's a reason for that. If I comment this out, and then recompile and rerun it, it optimizes everything away, so uh, that's why I need that. Now, although I said earlier I wasn't going to look at arithmetic, because it's not really C++, it's done in hardware, but have you ever been curious about just how fast, how many multiplications and divisions can it do per second? So I thought I'd give it a shot, and here's the program that I've written there. It just takes a couple of variables and then does three multiplications inside this loop, which it does a thousand times, and it repeats that a thousand times and takes the average time. So let's see how long it takes to run. And there's your answer, 185 nanoseconds. So that means it's doing 3,000 multiplications in 190 nanoseconds. That's very, very fast. I reckon it's approximately 60 picoseconds. That's six, ti t 6 times 10 to the minus 12, the amount of time it takes to execute one multiply, which is very fast. Now, I nearly forgot about the division. What I've done here is just change these two lines here, and when I run this, let's see how quick it is. And that's, well, it, the, this does actually vary a bit. I've seen it go down as, to as low as 480 to 519. And so it's taking roughly three times as long to do as the uh, multiplication. It's still pretty quick though. It's hard to time things like string searches because it depends on the length of the respective strings, but it's possible to time concatenation. So how long does it take to add a thousand characters to a string? You can do it with either plus equals or you can use dot append, the 
that's part of the, as a method on string. If it's a single character string, this is quite surprising. With this, it's slower than if you have a single character. I suppose this is because strings are reference, and it needs to be reference a string, whereas a character is probably held in a register. If you append single character strings, it's almost two and a half times slower than appending characters. So let's have a quick look at this. At the moment, this one is set up for characters, and it's using string dot append. So if I run this, and it takes four thousand seven hundred um, nanoseconds. Now, just uh, edited that and um, put in string dot append C, and let's run that and see how long it takes. And believe it or not, there's eleven thousand one hundred and sixty-four nanoseconds. Let me just revert to the previous one and run that, and you can see four four five nanoseconds. So there's a bit of a difference. So for the final timing today, well, let's try adding ints into a vector. Let's set a thousand and see how long it takes. Here you can see I've declared a, a list of the capacity for a thousand. I start timing there, I clear the list so it does it every time round, and then inside this inner loop I just add in a thousand integers from zero to nine nine nine, and then time it as before. So let's run that and see how long it takes. And that takes around two thousand three hundred nanoseconds. Now that's using pushback, which is what everybody knows for adding uh, onto the end of a list. But since C++11, there's been another method called, let me get this right, it's called in place back. And it does the same thing, but it does it in place uh, using C++'s placement new. So let's compile that and see how long that takes to run. And there is 843 nanoseconds. Remember the previous one was 2300. Let's try this one again because sometimes it doesn't even. Yeah, 581 nanoseconds is sort of. Yeah, around 580. So it's doing nearly four to five times faster using in place back rather than push back. So there's a tip for you when you're using vectors. So if you regard this as sort of a bit of fun, right? It's not hard and fast uh, benchmarking. Uh, benchmarking needs a fair bit more rigor, plus a lot more than what I've done here. But it's just to give you an idea of what it's like to time C++ code and get a reasonable idea. Thank you for watching.